Hello there, my name is George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. Now surnames, people ask us about this a lot. In fact, very often that's the first time people get a bit interested in their family and where they came from and so on. My surname, it seems a bit unusual. I wonder where it came from. Now that may be someone who lives in the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales, or Ireland, or maybe someone from abroad who knows had ancestors from over here. So let's, what does your surname tell you? about perhaps where you came from and other things and so on. So that's why we've made this video, particularly for those of you who are just starting to get interested in your family history. Now the origin of surnames is very interesting. 1066, William the Conqueror came over. At that point, there were no surnames in Britain. They evolved and they evolved by people being called what was distinguished them, what was different about them. So let's consider an ancient village, perhaps in the 12th, 13th century. And here we have various things. We have the manor house, typically there was a lord of the manor, quite often of Norman origin, who'd come over with uh, William the Conqueror, so let's call him De Stafford. Um, now, uh, what we've got in any village is woods, hill, fields, meadow, mill. You can see all of those would become surnames. Someone who literally lived near the wood could be called Wood. Then surnames come along and they get the name Wood based on the place where they lived. Now, place, quite often people move perhaps just four or five miles from one village to the next. And that's what distinguished them in that place. So if they move from a village called Barnes or Burton, that will become their surname, their place name. Other places, of course, is countries. So someone who was from Scotland moved perhaps to England. Someone from Flanders, known as Fleming. Again, you can imagine these becoming surnames based on the place that they came from, a certain type of surname to do with where the people were from or where they lived. Now, two other types of things, uh, Donald and John. What very often happened was the son of Donald was called Donald's son or John's son. A bit different the way it was handled in Scotland and other places, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Then there were various occupations. Most places, every village had a smith, a blacksmith or what have you, tailors, um, a, a writer, a, a, who would work over things. So again, these are occupations and those with occupations very often, that's what they were known as, of course, that would become their surname. Um, and then we get nicknames, literally brown, something had a dark complexion, strong, that person was strong. And that was what distinguished them and would become their surname. So surnames evolved based on these things that distinguish the people. And so we have four main types of surnames. Most of them adopted in the 200 years or so after William the Conqueror came, the 11th to 13th century. So local surnames we've talked about. The Latin origin of that is toponymic, so to do with a place or a feature, such as hill and wood. We've talked about Barnes, Burton, Scott, Fleming. Second type there, surnames of relationship. Again, the Latin patronymic, fealtic, loyalty. Sometimes in the clans in Scotland, people were not blood relations, but they were attached to that clan through loyalty. Slightly different in different countries. So John's son in Scotland, Mac means son. So there you get MacDonald. Wales, Jones, talk a bit about that. And Ireland, O'Brien. In fact, we're descended from the grandfather. So in his occupation, we've mentioned Smith, Taylor, Miller, walk around. I bet you could write down half a dozen surnames you know of in a couple of minutes that came from occupations. And then nicknames, we talked about Brown Young. <laughs> you know, it's very obvious in a way, isn't it? But these became surnames. Campbell in Scotland meant twisted mouth. So you will have one of these four types of surname. And that says a bit about how that surname originated. Now, an important thing to remember is just because you've got the same surname as someone, it doesn't mean there's a blood relationship. You look at these types of surnames, you can understand them being adopted by virtually anyone without any relationship. Now, another dimension is to look at how have surnames evolved over the centuries. And if we look at the countries of England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, here are the top 10, the top 10 most popular, most common surnames in each country. 
similar but slightly different. So there we are in England, Smith, and in fact in Scotland again, Smith, that occupation, just very, very widespread. And even there in Ireland, Fifth Down, Smith was a surname. Then we get Jones, William. Quite interesting, we'll talk about Wales in a moment. Um, they had particularly a lot of surnames of relationship, and you can see how those have come across to England. Doesn't mean to say some didn't originate in England as well, but Brown, they were that nickname, very high fourth in England, second in Scotland. John's son, the son of John. Uh, Wilson, Tomson, so surnames of relationship. Taylor, an occupation. Davis, Davies in, in Wales, again a surname of relationship. And Miller, there we are, there's another occupation. So in England, there's a, a spread of types of surname. In Scotland, similar but a bit different. Now, intriguingly, as I said, Mac means son. And you find MacDonald, and in Ireland they use Mac as well. But you could see here in the top 10 in Scotland, we still get Will Son, get Tom Son, slightly different spelling from in England, that can vary, Robert Son, Anderson. So four of the top things have the English, if you like, Son, as opposed to Mac. And there's MacDonald in at number nine. And then, of course, clans. You know, MacDonald is a MacDonald kind of Campbell clan, Stuart. Scott we mentioned earlier, uh, say Scott, <laughs> obviously people in Scotland came from there. Quite often it, it, they moved to other countries like England or maybe the borders of Scotland. So just looking at a surname can start to tell you where you may have been or where your ancestors may have been many centuries ago. Now Wales, instead of saying John's son, Davis' son, they tended to say the possessive, Jones, Davis, and you look, the top 10 surnames in Wales are all surnames of relationship. And there's a particular we reason why that evolved, we won't go into here, but you know, you can look at these and you can see they look like Christian names in many ways because that's what they were. They were the Christian name of the father that they took on board. And if you look at those, not um, reasonable to think, I have Welsh ancestry. Ireland, again a little bit different, interesting, Murphy and Kelly are both forms of nickname to do with warriors and fighting. Again, it reflects the way things were, unfortunately, many centuries ago. O, the four, O Sullivan, O Brown, four of the top ten are O Sullivan, typically grandfathers as opposed to father's name taken on. And there's Smith we talked about. So again, these are the way surnames evolve. If you have a surname like this, it tells you a lot. Of course, most people have other surnames. And it's intriguing, you get a surname based on someone moving from one village to the next. Very, very common type of surname, but typically not the most popular across the country, because of course, you just move from that village. Whereas if you move from Scotland to somewhere else, you might get that. If you live near a hill or a wood, then obviously there are lots of hills and woods around the country. So it gives you a bit of an insight there. Now, where did you come from? Now, an obvious example of being tied to a particular area is the clans in Scotland. And here is a clan map, and you can see where those surnames, those clans, were in the main. If we pick some of the names we looked at just now, MacDonald, Campbell, Stuart, Robertson, quite a lot of in the, the middle and sort of southern highlands of Scotland. Now, a little example pick out here. If any of you are from America, you probably know that Donald Trump, the president, his mother was a MacLeod from the Isle of Lewis in Scotland. Now, talk about concentrations. Even to this day, 25% of the people in Lewis have the surname MacLeod. Very, very strong thing. Of course, they're not all blood relations. They're part of the clan, but they were loyal to that clan. But <laughs> clearly it can be a bit confusing if you live there. So this is the way surnames evolve, and it may indicate where your ancestors came from. On the theme of Scotland, in a way, quite interesting to look at particular instances in history or certain situations where so it is a, and think a bit more about now Robert Burns, you all have heard the famous Scottish poet. Quite interesting to pick those people who were associated with him, his friends and others, and look at the types of surnames they had. Burns was a local surname. Morton, Hamilton, these are all places rich and these are friends of, of Burns and so on. So there's a relationship. Nance Tinnock, quite a character. Gibbs' son, Morris' son. Um, so the occupation. Robert Burns married Jean Armour. Stuart Fisher Hunter, again, you could see 
these surnames being occupations. And then nicknames, I mentioned earlier, Camel being Twisted Mouth, Highland Mary. <laughs> You can read the poems about her, if you didn't read. So it's so quite interesting, it almost brings flavour to reading about someone. So certainly it's really very, very interesting. And if you start to get interested, then you start to wonder, I wonder where my family came from. Because unfortunately, the surnames evolved six, seven, eight hundred years ago. The odds of being traced back that far are not good. What you can do though, or we can help you trace back to 300 or more years. And we made lots of videos for this, so if you are interested, please have a look at these videos. So it might be you've got English family history or Scottish family history. There are videos to do with that. You might have come from certain parts of these places, so London is an obvious part of England. Um, we've got other videos about surnames. You can see the bottom left there. I personally have ancestors who were on the Mayflower and went over afterwards next year. And the Delano's were actually originated from Flanders, not, not, not England. And there's a whole story there. I've just recently published a book about that. Bottom right there, well, what happens if you ask us to look into your ancestry? So we made a video with three couples just talking about what they got out of having their family researched and all they found out from that. So I hope you found that interesting. Please feel free to get in touch. Uh, we do a free consultation. Uh, we're not sure what we may or may not be able to do with you. This is not an off the shelf thing. So send us your information, we have a look, and then we get back to you with the options that we suggest and associated costs. We've got various packages. You can see how to contact us there. There's the Research Through People website. Send us an email at info at researchthroughpeople.com. Give us a ring. There's the phone number. So I hope you found that interesting. Very much look forward to hearing.